Hi, today we're going to go over two-way tables, also known as contingency tables. This section actually is not in your book, so you're going to have to refer to the course packet. Everything contained in the course packet is all you would need to know about two-way tables for the next exam. We are going to um, be dealing with the following example, which uh, has to do with the Titanic and the sinking of the Titanic. Uh, we have information on certain variables, such as whether or not a passenger survived, their gender, their class. Uh, here we have data from five passengers. So the first passenger did not survive. That He was a male, and he was from third class. Uh, this is just five of the passengers, but we have uh, more data than that available. So two-way tables are used when we have uh, two categorical variables, and we generally ca um, summarize categorical variables by looking at counts or percentages, percentages that fall into each category. So we're going to first talk about the marginal distribution. When I say distribution of a categorical variable, it means the percent that falls into um, individual categories. So we can look at um, and the marginal distribution means just one of the variables. We're not going to consider more than one variable when looking at the marginal distribution. So this would be the marginal distribution of passenger class. So there were 325 passengers in first class. Uh, that, was, that would correspond to 14.77%, 12.95% um, in second, and so forth. So we have first, second, third, and crew passengers. Another way to summarize a categorical variable would be what we call a bar graph. And so um, I can go to StatCrunch, and I can create a graph. Now you probably have heard of a pie chart. Um, that's another way to categorize a, summarize a categorical variable. But we're going to go ahead and do a bar plot. And I have the summary data to the left there. So I'm going to just hit summary. And the variable is class. The counts are in the second column. And I'm going to look at the percent rather than the frequency. And so I'm going to hit percent there. And then I can just hit uh, calculate. And this would be the bar graph for um, class of a passenger. We have almost 40% crew and a little over 30% third and so forth. All right, so let's go back to the notes. Now we're going to talk about uh, two-way tables. So two-way tables used to summarize two categorical variables at a time. And then once we do that, we can see perhaps if there's an association. So were people more likely to live if they were in first class versus crew and so forth? We do that by looking at distributions of the variables. So here's a two-way table of the um, variable survival, so whether someone lived or died, and their class. And so uh, I can interpret this as 203 passengers were from first class and lived. 528 passengers were from third class and died. There were a total of 2,201 passengers. 711 of them, of them lived, and 1,490 of them died. So we can look at the marginal distribution of class, which we just did, and we can also look at the marginal distribution of survival. And when I say marginal distribution, you're dealing with either the row totals, like we did for class, or you're dealing with the column total. So there are 711 out of 2201 that lived, and then 1,490 out of 2,201 that survived. So we can create a table just like this one, but for the survival variable. OK, so 711 out of 2,201, that's going to be equal to 32.3%. I'll just leave off the percent there. And then uh, 1490 divided by uh, 2201, that's going to be equal to 67.7%. So that's the breakdown of the survival variable. 32.3% of the passengers lived, and 67.7% of the passengers 
died. Those are marginal distributions because it's the summary of just one of the variables at a time, either sur uh, survival or passenger class. Okay, uh, so we'll do a quick example. Now, if you're given a two-way table like this, this is a two-way table of whether or not people wear uh, seatbelts and the number of cigarettes. The number of cigarettes obviously is a quantitative variable, but you can make it categorical by just putting individuals into categories like we did here. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is compute the row totals and the column totals, and that's gonna make all our calculations easier if we know those. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the uh, column total here would be 175 plus 149. And so that's going to be 324. And uh, 37, 83, 3 there and uh, 15, 6 plus 9. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the row totals. So this row total is going to be uh, 243. And then the next one is 216. And then I can do a row or column total here for the total number of people in the survey. So it doesn't really matter. They sh the row and the column total should add up to the same um, if you calculated everything correctly. Okay, so that's that. Now I can use that information to answer the following um, questions. So we're going to look at the marginal distribution of the cigarette variable. That means I'm just looking at the cigarette variable, so what I want to do is I want to look at these numbers right here. And I'm always dividing by 459 for the marginal distributions. So all I'm really doing is just finding percent that fall into each category. All right, so we have uh, 324 divided by 459. That's equal to 70.6%. Then we have uh, 37 divided by 459, that's equal to 8.1%. And then we have 83 divided by 459, and that's equal to um, 18%. And everything should add up to 1, so that's something to check. But the last one is 15 divided by 459 and that's equal to 3.3%. So these should add up to about 100% with maybe a little bit of rounding error. Yep, it adds up to 100%. Okay, so that's the marginal distribution of the cigarette variable. And then I wanna do the same thing for the seatbelt variable. So when I do the seatbelt variable, I wanna look at these numbers here. And so the first one would be uh, 243 divided by 459. That's equal to 52.9%. And then uh, 216 divided by uh, 459. And that's equal to 47.1%. Okay, so we had 53% that wear the seatbelts, about 41% that don't. Okay, so that's the... Uh, marginal distribution, and the next video we're going to talk about conditional distribution.